Um, we just want to thank you guys for your time and attention and patience throughout this conference. Uh, it's, it's been really interesting for us to be involved, uh, so we appreciate that. Um, we are representing the University of Tennessee's a ATP class. My name is Helen Roscoe, and I am a graduate student in the Department of Geography. I am April Ford. I'm a master's student in agricultural leadership. Hi, I'm Alex Pulaski, and I'm a doctoral candidate in energy science and engineering. And I'm Jordan Skeen, and I'm a master's student in political science. I'm Cassie Earth, I'll be live tweeting, so follow the hashtag. I'm in the President Center. And I'm Charlie Williams, and I'm a master's student in public policy and administration. Thank you. Okay, so our project, we wanted to see would crowdfunding work um, in a rural area. We know that's been very successful in urban areas, but we wanted to see if it would work in a small place such as Ducktown, Tennessee. Um, they're usually used for green projects, and one of these green projects um, we'll talk about a little bit later, but the approach um, to see how it can be used in a smaller setting, if the people are going to be receptive to it, and all the challenges and progresses that come with it. So the Copper Basin, if you can see, is the little arrow right there. And it's in the southeastern corner of Tennessee near Chattanooga and McKaysville, Georgia. The environmental transformation of the Copper Basin used to be the world's largest copper uh, mining facility. And as you can see in the 1960 photo, it looks like a moonscape where the earth has been damaged. But in the 2000 photo, it's been restored to its natural glory and the city around it has come back with it. All right, the economic transformation uh, the copper production ceased in the 1980s. The community lost its jobs, its residents, its spark, really didn't know where to go. But now they're embracing the outdoor tourism, the recreation, and they have a vision to become the greenest little city in America. One of the really neat parts about Ducktown is they actually have four electrical vehicle charging stations, and they get 60% of their power from electrical, um, for, from solar uh, panels. Okay, so the class last year, um, they determined that um, a couple different options could exist for Ducktown to have a new industry for the 21st century. So one of the uh, options that came up was contour crafting. Contour crafting is a new technology, uh, it's in the stages of development, uh, where houses, full-size houses can be printed using concrete extrusion and can provide uh, solid housing across all income levels, including replacements for trailer homes. But to, to utilize the strategy uh, in a long-term scenario for Ducktown, um, 3D printing needed to be a base of understanding and knowledge for the community. So it was determined that 3D printing was the first example of a way for the town to become familiar with the technology and use that as a greater strategy in the future to utilize this technology. So working with uh, Copper Basin Learning Center uh, within Copper Basin High School, um, it was determined that there was an arts and education program uh, with a full-time technology uh, teacher uh, who would be able to disseminate this technology and information uh, with the class there. We decided to raise a crowdfund uh, campaign that we'll talk about here very shortly to raise money for a 3D printer to be utilized in not only engineering and math education, but also using the arts program uh, viable to this community. So the first step was to think about whether or not crowdfunding made sense for our project because by and large, um, few rural communities have used this technique. So we met with the staff at the Copper Basin Learning Center um, and walked them through what it would take to, to have a successful crowdfunding campaign and then what it meant afterwards. And we determined that it was a viable option for them, so we then um, had to determine what our, um, sorry, what our goal should be based on printer costs, accessories, taxes, fees, and we came up with $2,500. And so in order to run a successful campaign, you have to market it. So our class um, worked with members of UT and TVA Media Relations um, to put together our page, how to create momentum throughout the campaign, um, and work within the community to bring them together and, and use this, this technology properly. Um, after that, we created a Facebook page for it, a Twitter, and a website as ways to increase our visibility. From there, we had to choose a platform. So we 
um, looked at several different platforms and came across Indiegogo um, because they're well established, they have a lot of visibility, and the fees are um, good for nonprofits, which is what we worked with, the Cover Basin Learning Center. Um, from there, we had we we had to set up our our platform. So we had to basically put all the information about the Appalachian Regional Commission and the Appalachian Teaching Project and how we our class is working with the Copper Basin Learning Center to get them this technology. And from there we launched in October and we kept going until November 30th. Um, during the campaign we worked together to exhaust our own social networks and we were also featured in the Chattanooga Times Free Press, the Knoxville News, and the local Cleveland News there, and the Tennessee News Today. We found it was also important to regularly update contributors with news and pictures, as well as updating our website, Facebook, and Twitter as the campaign progressed. The exciting news is that we did reach our goal, um, but as you can see, it was not all at once or even overnight. It took the course of our campaign um, you, you can see in the graph here, the blue bars indicate that our daily amount raised, while the orange line shows the total amount raised over time. Okay. So, um, and in the process of crowdfunding and this unique technique, what we, what we found out based off of that previous graph that you just showed, we averaged donation, donations of $54, which as you can see, it's the national average uh, is fairly right on there. And we exceeded our goal and raised $2,632. Um, we had a total of 48 donations. A lot of our donations came, again, from our personal networks, but also our local institution at, at, in Knoxville, um, a TVA reps, and we also did have some local donations from Ducktown and Copper Basin. And you can see here, our farthest donation came from Italy, so we, uh, we, we made it across the world, right? <laughs> part, part of the world. Um, but with any research study, there's going to be inherent challenges and barriers. Um, and so one of, these are some of the barriers that we came across was, were competing demands for local funds. Um, we're, we're all here at this uh, meeting for, for very good reasons, right? We all know that the Appalachia region is distressed and, and challenged in this way. And Ducktown and the Copper Basin is in no way different from that. Um, so uh, local residents really need to choose how they want to spend their money and what they want to do with that. Uh, and so that's, that's the difficulty that we had to overcome. Uh, further, our ATP class constraints, we met one day a week. Uh, we were only in the class for a semester, so that's something that we have to work with as well. Um, we did kind of see a digital divide, uh, especially in the local community and a lack of familiarity with crowdfunding in general, specifically with rural communities. Um, and so you see that our average donation is $54. Um, and that's, that's, really, that's really good, but we would maybe like to see more $5, $10 donations, um, and that's something that you know, if we can work with communities on awareness and something in the future, that would be something to look at. Uh, we also did not include any incentives in our crowdfunding campaign, which is often how crowdfunding works, right? You pay $10 and you get a cool t-shirt. Um, we decided not to do that because we wanted, A, the majority of our money to be spent for the printer. We didn't want to spend money on incentives. And further, because of our class constraints, uh, you know, we, we end in the semester, it would kind of be difficult for us to follow through with some of these processes. Um, and lastly, we need to be real, right? We need to understand that a lot of crowdfunding that you see these days are $100,000, $200,000, and those are more often than not the, the, the rarity. Uh, and a lot of projects are, are more in the $4,000 range, and so we wanted, we wanted to be able to set a realistic goal, and that is something that we needed to understand. Um, so in the future, um, we, we feel that this is definitely a viable option for a rural community. Um, one of the things that we found that was really good that we were able to do this, this semester was uh, work. We were providing Copper Basin with a solid um, established partner, if you will, University of Tennessee, uh, also with TVA. So establishing good community relations and a good partner is something that's pretty necessary. Uh, further throughout the semester, we held continuous engagement with the Copper Basin community. Uh, our contact at the Copper Basin, we were, if we weren't down in Ducktown talking with them, then we were emailing with them. Uh, we were trying to keep them engaged the whole time, and any information, you know, vice versa, the conversation was there. Uh, further, we were able to, um, because our class started in, in August, we were able to at least get a good month of awareness building, um, but that could probably even be furthered before that. Uh, but we were able to build good awareness ahead of time, and that is something that needs to be done for the future as well. 
Uh, further, we have a strong group of people. Our class was um, mostly graduate students that were, took the class very seriously. Uh, we were interested in this, so we need to have a strong group of people, not only on our side, but then also working with the Learning Center. Um, Alex mentioned they have a full-time tech teacher that's got really involved, and then we have the, the director of the Learning Center as well. So there's a good, strong anchor in Ducktown that's willing to work with us. Um, but we do find that, that crowdfunding is best for small projects uh, and should be used sparingly. So it is in no way a viable, uh, consistent form of funding, but it is an option for maybe some specific sporadic events, um, but it shouldn't be relied on like that. So after the conclusions of our, our, our research process, we, we decided to come up with a civic crowdfunding guide to be used uh, specifically for rural Appalachian communities should they want to implement this type of project in their future. Our, our guide is available for download, so if you Google uh, Copper Basin 3D, you'll find our website, and you'll find our Twitter, and our, you'll find all that stuff, right? And you'll find the link for our download. We also have a couple of our guides available in the back with Troy. If you want to look at them, feel free. Any questions will be available during the break for that. Uh, and, and further, we shared our, our findings with the UT Institute for Public Service and uh, some development districts and our, our UT Appalachian partners as well. Um, so again, just kind of touch on the overarching themes here. Uh, it, it, we were successful, um, and so that's always a good thing. And it works in rural communities. This was kind of the first time that we tested something like this. There's not a lot of literature on it, so this was a really exciting thing for us. Um, but again, we have to be realistic. Million dollar projects are the exception. They're not the norm. Um, and so our idea of setting a realistic goal at $2,500, that we met that, um, and, and again, you can, it, it, it's adaptable for different projects in different communities. So if you want to have flexible funding, you exceed your goal, that's excellent, but it has to be set at a real, realistic pace. Um, and again, most civic uh, crowdfunding projects are good for our public goods like gardens, community spaces, parks, things like that. So really implementing this tech technology theme was something that we were interested in um, providing uh, future jobs for the area that, that will be applicable in, in you know, five or 10 years, something like that. And again, uh, we want to harp on the partnerships, uh, engaging with the community and the community engaging with us. Uh, it's a two-way street here. We certainly don't know what Ducktown needs, and, and so we have to work together like that. Um, we like to thank these are some of our donors that we had. Uh, we also had a lot of other anonymous donors. Um, and finally, this is our, our full team. We have some members of the class that, that, that stayed back in Knoxville. So thank you guys.